Hey everybody, Randy Conway here with Randy Conway Poems, and I'm going to do something today that's really outside of my comfort zone, something I don't like to do. But I've been having trouble writing lately, and I have a video I've been working on, and it's just not going anywhere. And I've been compelled for several weeks to do this. The last thing I wrote was called The Time of Wailing. And I'm going to read just a few verses of it because uh, it's too long to read the whole thing. But uh, a few verses of A Time of Wailing goes like this. The time is now upon us, and the wailing has begun. Screams tear through the night, and many are undone. Undone because they refused knowledge, and they rejected truth. The warnings were scoffed, and there is none their fears to soothe. For years, men have been sliding into depravity, and so we have come to living out this malady, surrounded by those now more demon than human, and the prophecies of Scripture every day are proven. Today is the day that you must take action, for tomorrow is too late. The provision available to you today will not wait. Today is the day of preparation, repentance, and salvation. Now is the moment. For tomorrow, memories will bring vexation. For the blood-bought child, there is the knowledge that we do all we can, then stand upon the rock that is solid. There is a hiding place provided by the living God, but you can't find it if you listen to the voice of fraud. Many will be displaced because they believed the demonic influence of trolls, thinking watchmen just wanted their money and were trying to cajole waiting for the world to align with their own imaginations before they will take heed. But the new world order has already arrived, and its arrival they did not see. Willful ignorance will prove for untold numbers to be fatal. A remnant will survive if to the Father they remain faithful. The masses are entertained by this world's pleasures and perversions, and they will have no oil to light their lamps when this darkness makes incursion. When faith and trouble collide, how will you fare? Men's hearts will fail for fear. Are you prepared? There will be days never seen before since time began. Do you know the Father? Have you prayed? What is your plan? Several weeks ago, actually it's probably been four months ago now, I was troubled through the night whether awake or asleep, in my dreams or in my thoughts, with two songs. I had two songs that just haunted my mind. And now just a little bit of um, uh, explanation here. I'm not the guy that has hundreds and hundreds of, of songs on his playlist on his phone. I, I have none. I have no songs on my phone. I, I'm not the guy that sits around and listens to music. Uh, when I have time uh, to sit and, and do that, I'm typically listening to uh, some teacher, some teaching, uh, trying to uh, e expand my knowledge and understanding of the times we're living in the prophecies. Not that I don't love music and appreciate music, uh, but it's, it's uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is this is not a song that was stuck in my head uh, because I heard it, because I hadn't. And as I lay there, these two songs came to my mind, and they left. They didn't leave me for the entire night and half of the next day. And one is an old song, Southern Gospel song, uh, written by Mosey Lister. I don't even know when I ever heard this song. Uh, but the words of the song say, In the dark of the midnight have I oft hid my face, while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place. Mid the crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more. Till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast and let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. The other song that uh, was there at the same night was, You Are My Hiding Place. And the words to it say, You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength 
of the Lord. Lord, I will trust in you. Two things, one about the time of wailing the poem and one about these songs. First, the songs, I knew there was a message there and I just didn't know how to deliver it. So in a little bit, I'm going to go into the piano and I'm going to sit down and play these songs because that's what I did the very next morning when I got out of bed. Um, one of them, Till the Storm Passes By, I don't even have the music to. It's just a lyrics on a page. And uh, I sat down and began to play these songs and I've played them nearly every day since then. For, for the past several months, I've, I've played them. And uh, I'm not a pianist. I've never had lessons. I, this was just in my spirit and uh, I'm just self-taught and, and don't put my fingers in the right place and have terrible timing and miss notes but I don't care there's a message here uh, that I believe I was supposed to deliver earlier and now's the time I have to get it out in the dark of the midnight I have oft hid my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place and then the other song you are my hiding place and I believe that's where we're at today as Christians. That's where we're at today in the things that are going on in the world. We have to know where our hiding place is. In regards to the piece of the poem I read earlier, the time of wailing, you know, the Bible says that there'll be birth pains, labor pains. And I don't understand and know exactly what's going on right now in the world, but uh, I do believe it is a labor pain. Uh, and what I do know about labor is there's a pain to follow and it is it comes quicker and with more intensity and it just continues that way until birth is given and being a man it's difficult for me to to uh, express this but I am the father of three children my wife gave birth to three children and miscarried one so she actually gave birth to four uh, and but what I noticed when she was in the hospital uh, giving birth. She was in the labor room. My wife is one of those people. She was prepared emotionally. She was prepared physically. And she was prepared spiritually uh, for what she was accomplishing. She was prepared for that birth. And she, uh, she made very little noise. She m maybe made a groan or two, but she made no noise. She knew the end result. She knew what was coming and she knew the joy that would come afterwards. But in another room adjoining, there was someone, and, and I, I don't mean any disrespect to any woman that's ever had a child, and I don't know this woman, I could just only hear. And I had to wonder, was she prepared spiritually, emotionally, physically? Did she have um, uh, parents that uh, had instructed her and brought her up, and, and did she know what to expect? Or was she just pregnant and had no idea what to expect? but she was wailing at the top of her lungs, screaming. You could hear her up and down the halls. She was literally wailing throughout her labor. I think the thing, same thing is true right now. I believe that when uh, Jesus met with his disciples, recorded in Matthew 24, and they said, tell us the signs of the end of the age, he gave them the signs. And I, I believe that at the point of his ascension, both time and dimension became pregnant with the prophecies that Jesus had foretold, that the Bible uh, explicitly tells us. And from that pregnancy till now, we have gone from conception to ready for delivery. And I believe this is a labor pain. And there's still time to get ready. There's still time to prepare yourself emotionally, spiritually, and physically for the days that lie ahead. Uh, to know the joy that lies on the other side uh, because time and dimensions won't stay pregnant forever. The prophecies will be fulfilled. The end must be delivered. And um, so I wrote the time, of, the time of wailing and I believe that's where we're at right now. And those who are uh, have no understanding, who haven't listened to the words of the prophets, haven't listened to the words of the watchmen, haven't prepared their hearts for uh, this time right now, who haven't been on their knees, who haven't sought the Father for the hiding place, who have no idea what to expect, they'll be the ones wailing uh, as the birth pains continue to come one after another, greater in intensity. 
but the joy is uh, we know what the end is. We know what it's going to be like. We know who who holds the victory. It's already been won. Calvary was not uh, for naught. Calvary had a purpose, and its purpose was fulfilled. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. And I just encourage you to, uh, to take some um, a hope in these two songs till the storm passes by and you are my hiding place and know that we don't have to live through this in fear. We can live through this in hope. So I'm going to go to the piano and uh, do the best I can to share with you what was in my heart uh, and the message that God gave me in the night to share with you that we have a hiding place. God bless you.